Hey all my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimson Knights, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your hostess, femininity coach and author, The Crimson Cure. And this is my perspective. So shout out, first of all, to Chisha, Chisha Z for this clip. We are going to take a look at this woman's story. And she's giggling and laughing through it. But there's a lesson that needs to be heard. So here we go. Let me tell you about a time I tried to leave my husband in Nigeria and walk away from him. You're listening. So we were out and about and we got into an argument. And I can't really remember what the argument was about now. But I remember I was really mad. And um, we were almost home and I asked him to pull over. I told him, I said, just let me out this car. Just, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll walk. So after saying that over and over again and then trying to get out the car my own self, um, he stopped the car mm. and he was like, okay, get out. And even though I knew where I was at, I was like, I thought I knew where I was at. I was, you know, it seemed like we were close to where we were going right? and I could walk from there. So I got out of the car, not knowing at the time that my phone was connected to his, um, to his hotspot and I didn't, I wouldn't have any service. Mm. So as I was packing my things to get out the car, I was saying what I had to say to him, fussing him and things like that. And he was saying, you know, what he had to say to me. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I got out the car like, you know, oh, well. So um, he pulls off. He pulls off. And um, so I started, you know, trying to use my phone and I and it just hit me. OK, I don't have any network. So I'm like, oh my God, did he really leave me? Yes. I started, I started to panic. So this couple was walking like towards us, and I guess they heard this heard heard us arguing, and they were looking at me like I was crazy, like I was a mad woman because I was yelling. And um, so after Zeki pulled off, I was like, um, I was like, excuse me, excuse me, can I use your phone? And they were just looking at me like I was something was wrong with me, <laughs> like I had two heads or something. Because I was really showing out, y'all. I was showing out. Sounds like she was yelling and talking. You know, he let out in a place. Um, they just kept walking. They didn't. Say, they didn't stop. They didn't. They didn't say like, "What's wrong?" They were just looking like, "What is wrong with this lady?" And you know, and usually, y'all know, I don't really talk in, in public. But um, I was talking that day, and I was like, "Excuse me, did y'all hear me? Can I use your phone? I just need you. I just need you to use your phone." And you would you would have thought that that they were deaf because they were just like walking and staring at me and totally ignoring what I was asking them to do. Yep, yep. Now, I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna pause it just right here because I need the ladies to understand this. All of these little shenanigans that y'all pull, this is how you lose your men. This is how you lose your relationships. This is how you change. The nature of your relationship from a positive one to a negative one, throwing temper tantrums, being an emotional two year old, not being able to articulate what's going on with you, you know, acting a fool with your man. Let me out. I want to get out and all this other kind of stuff just because you're upset. Just because you uh, have gotten into a back and forth with your husband, all of that stuff is unnecessary. Listen, as you remain married, you're going to have a disagreement. So, there's going to be some point where somebody's mad at somebody. All right. Is, is this going to happen? People have conflict. People have disputes, even when they're together, even when they love each other. It's not always 100% of the time going to be, okay, well, it's all right. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes you, your emotions are going to get the best of you. Your anger is going to get the best of you, you know, and you may end up yelling at each other or you might end up 
arguing with each other. You still have to have some mindfulness though. Even in that situation, you still got to have some mindfulness of what you are saying and what you're doing. All right. And she got surprised because after, like she said, repeatedly talking about she want to get out and trying to open the door and you know what I'm saying? Rah, rah, like you really want to get out this car. And he actually let her out the car and kept and pulled off. Now she wants to be like, why did he leave? Because you said, and listen, this is what men need to do with y'all. A lot of times men need to stand on business, make you stand on business. That's what they need to do. The stuff that you are repeatedly fly out your mouth and you swear to God that this is what you want to do and this is what's going to happen, then he need to make you stand on that. Go ahead and stand on it. We'll see. We'll see if you really want to be out in this car. Uh, people in other countries, mind you, she's in Nigeria. Her husband is Nigerian. Okay? But even if your husband is American, you pulling these shenanigans? No. This is how you lose your relationship because there are men in America that stand on business and they're going to make you stand on the stupid stuff that you're talking about. So, you know what I'm saying? Running your mouth and being a two-year-old trying to get your way and trying to make him turn, you know, what he's saying around or make him stop saying a certain thing or make him do or say or think whatever it is you're trying to make him do or say or think or trying to be the victim or whatever the motivation is for being childish with him. If he start, they, if these men start making you stand on what you talking about, I bet y'all will watch what you say. Cause he pulled off and then she wanted to be a victim. Then she wanted to try to figure, Oh, well, you know, he was supposed to know that she wasn't going to have network service. He knew that. He knew that. He knew she wasn't going to have no network service. Trust and believe he knew that. But we just going to let you out. Since you want to be out, you want to be grown, you want to talk stupid, fine. Get out of the car. We'll see how you make it. We'll see how far you make it without me. Right? And those people that was looking at her and didn't help her, you listen, people are not trying to get into your shenanigans and help you. And the reason why they're not going to help you is because they already saw you act a fool. And they're not going to get in the middle of what is clearly a couple's dispute, a married couple's dispute. They don't know who started what and who's doing what. So they don't know you. So they don't owe you any obligation to help you or to do any of that stuff. You wanted to get out of the car. You solve your own problems. Okay, we're going to continue. So after I saw that, you know, um, no one was going to help me <laughs> and I was afraid to ask anybody else to use their phone, I started walking in the direction that I thought that um, he was going. And when I got to to the place where I thought I, where my turn was, I noticed it. It was not the same place. It looked like the place, but it was not the same place. So I really didn't know where I was at. So at this point, I'm lost. Hmm. Again, I started to panic. I was like, oh, my God, where am I at? I was like, Lord, please, please. And I'm still pressing this phone like it's really going to work. Um, so after standing there, I just stood there because I didn't want to go somewhere where he couldn't find me. So I just stood there and I was just crying. And I was like, you know, what in the world? Why did I even get out of like the car? And how can he this is, leave me like this? This is was, exactly what a child would have done. If you had put your 10-year-old out of the car because they was acting stupid. This is exactly what a child would have done. Eventually a kid would have stood there and just started crying because they don't know what to do. They talked crazy and now they don't know what to do when you make them, you make them stand on what they said. Oh, you hate me. You, you don't want me around. I ain't no good. Okay. Make it, make it. I want to see you make it for the next 20 minutes. Make it so mad. How could he just leave you? So after being there for probably about um, a half hour or so, 
um, I just started like yelling. <laughs> Looking crazy. I was acting a fool. I started yelling and I was like, can someone help me? <laughs> I was hot. I was bothered. I wanted some water and I was fed up. I was I was pissed off. I was so mad at him. I was like, how could he just leave me like this? <sighs> so, like I said, after a while, he came back and it was probably like 30 minutes later, he came back and he was like, he was like, get in the car. And I was like, no, I'm not getting anywhere. I'm not going, I'm not going anywhere with you. I'm going back. I'm going back home. Just take me to the airport. He was like, okay, I'll take you to the airport. Just get in the car. I was like, no. And I'm still being stubborn. <laughs> the way that sun was beaming down on me mm. and how thirsty I was and how irritated I was, I was not about to let him pull off again because he showed me the first time that he would. Right. So I Hey, that was uh, an important point right there. Right? Control your energy. But you have. And can be get in the car. If you want to go to the airport, I'll take you to the airport, but just get in, get in the car. And I was like, just standing there, not saying anything, just stand, staring at him. He said, I'm going to give you two minutes to get in the car. And when I, when I tell you, it was seconds before that two minutes was up, he was the the wheels was rolling. I was like, get, let me in. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> Y'all, you should have seen me try to jump in that car. You would think I was one of the, the actors on the Dukes of Hazard. I was trying to jump in that car so quick. And I was like, you know what? I say, take me to the airport right now. Acting like she's back in the U.S. Right now. <laughs> he started driving off. And he uh, when he turned, I saw exactly where we were and we were right i was like right around the corner from the place that we were going to so i at everything clicked on me i just turned too quick and i and i and i so it didn't look familiar and um he said he said kevin i was right there watching you the whole time he said i saw you acting the fool talking to yourself yelling and screaming he was like he was like you will holler too much oh he said, you said, you're out too much. And I was like, I'm still staring at him because I'm still mad. I was like, go get me some water, please. Please just give me some water. You know, acting really entitled and just, just I was acting up. I was acting up. Um, and then he was like, he, you know, he 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 didn't, he was, he didn't get me the water. And um, he was like, just hold on. He said, hold on. I said, Ziggy, I'm thirsty. I'm, you know, I've been standing in the sun. He was like, he said, whose problem is that? Whose problem? <laughs> Yours? He said, "Y'all American women are too entitled." Mm. He said, "You cannot act like that. <laughs> act like that." Y'all American women. Now, um, you know what? That's about the end of it. And she knew that she was doing too much. And a lot of times, ladies, you know that you're doing too much. And you continue to do it because he came back and said, you know, I was watching you. So they don't be gone. They be still in protect mode still. In, because if anything would have happened to her, he, he, he would have came right over there argument or not. The men really do. The husbands really do be loving you and y'all be acting up. And I'm not saying that you, that, you, that no, none of y'all love y'all husbands, but y'all have to stop acting like that. Acting like two-year-olds, because when he came back around, she was still trying to be stubborn with her arms folded, talking about how she ain't going to get in the car after just a second ago, wondering how it was that he could live with himself having pulled off from her and, and regretting the fact that she had gotten out of the car in the first place. And then once he came back around to save her and she felt more secure in what was going on and she didn't feel so lost. Now she was back to acting a fool and he was going to pull off again, pull off again. Okay. And she, she was like, okay, I better get some act right because he pulled off the first time. So he will pull off. And a lot of times this is what me and have to do with y'all prove that he's not playing. Prove he's not playing. Cause you a kid and you don't you don't think fat meat is greasy, just like a lot of little kids. Little kids don't do not believe 
that stuff is going to befall them until you make it happen. That's why you can't threaten kids and don't follow through with what you threaten them with. If you threaten them with some type of punishment or something like that, some consequences for them acting a fool and you threaten too many times and you don't fall through with it, they stop believing you. They all, they just get worse. Like, oh, mama ain't going to do nothing. Daddy ain't going to do nothing. But if you threaten one or, once or twice, you better stop or this is going to happen to you. That's going to happen to you. This is going to be the punishment for that. And they keep on going, testing your limits like that, trying you. And you go ahead and drop the hammer on it and be like, nope, I told you. No, please. No, no, no. I don't want to hear no pleading and no crying because you wasn't crying when you was talking smart. So now here are the consequences that I told you was going to be your consequences. And now you're going to have to suffer all the way through to the end of it because we're not doing it. We're not doing it. And most of the time, kids get act right. Oh, mama not playing. Daddy not playing. They really did do that to me. Man, how could they do that to me? Because you act stupid. That's why. And I told you to stop. I gave you plenty of chances to correct yourself. And you didn't want to do it. You wanted to keep pushing boundaries. And a lot of y'all are habitual line steppers. You step over the line. You keep stepping over the line. And your husband, don't think your husband is never supposed to draw a hard boundary for you where he's not going to let you do that. And then once he draw that boundary, now he's the bad guy and he doing you wrong. Y'all better stop. Jump down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your host, The Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites.